Hello YouTube, welcome to part 5 of the Nether Beast character study. And today I'm coming at you with some actuality, some things that happened very recently. Because most of the stuff I've discussed so far was old videos that were archived that I could access of him. But nowadays, he's making new content and therefore he's spreading new lies. And that means that this series ex is expanding rapidly in terms of documents and in terms of data that I was able to accumulate which also means that it might become not as long as the Bloho case study, but it's going to run a lengthy term. So we are in for the long run. I have a lot of topics that I'm going to bring to you, things from the past also that I've uncovered on the Nether Beast, things that I think will blow your mind. But when it comes to recent events, you will see that he's still up to his own way of always making up stuff. He's still trying to scam people out of their money and more importantly, and more, uh, more, uh, what is the term in English? Uh, striking, it's not striking, uh, it's uh, a worrying, more worrying. He's trying to start a court. He, he, he's actively trying to recruit people into a court. So I'm going to get to that. But as far as the structure of these are going to be for the future, I'm going to do it just the way I did it for our boy Hemingway. I'm going to try and make the videos centered around topics. That way it has a running theme and it's easier to follow and it's easier for you to go back to a certain installment because they, are, they all have a numero now, they all have a number and find exactly what you need. So today I'm going to talk about two things. One, the claims that he has on bodybuilding, the size claims that he still makes to this day. And two, I'm going to talk about the channel, the reason why he creates channels and the, the, the fraudulent behavior he's engaging in on YouTube that has led to his termination in the past and could lead to his termination again in the future. So the first thing is the size claims. Very recently, Nero posted a video on his new channel where he proved, quote unquote, that he has 20 inches arms. And the 20 inches arms is very important because one, it's a common claim for frauds. I don't know why these people always speak wrong numbers and they always speak the same numbers. But when someone tells you they have 20 inches arms or they used to have 20 inches arms in the past, you can tell 100% that they're lying. Unless they have documents proving it, it's a lie. 20 inches is extremely hard to reach, especially for naturals, especially if you're lean. And therefore, it's never something that can be verified. And yet, Nether has been able in the past to produce two videos where he proves he has 20 inches arms. And the first one, actually, people spam it a lot in the comments on, on the, these character studies because I keep repeating that he never had 20 inches arms. And people tell me, oh, but there's, an, there's a video and the video is still accessible today. If you check the interview between Alex from Alpha Destiny and Nether, there's a small clip where you can see the measuring. And this is the point of contention. And this is my big issue with the Nether fanboys because they are pretty stupid. And I don't mean that to insult them. I mean that as a factual statement. The video, on the video, you can clearly see that the tape is twisted. It's not straight. Now, if you have a decent understanding of life in general, you understand that the more you twist the tape, the more you add additional inches to the tape because the twist heightens the distance. So if I have a tape from here to here and it's straight, it's going to be much shorter than a tape from here to here that I twist because I'm, it's basically double jointed and it can, it can have a lot of inches. And yet neither Alex for some reason or the fanboys realized that no one called it out. The tape was completely loose. So on this video, I think that he added at least four inches to his measurement. So this one, is, is not a proper way to measure your arm. Look at how I did it in the bigger arm playlist. It's tight. I show both sides to show that it's tight and, and completely around the arm. And then I show the number and I hold the number and I show again that I didn't add slack. That's how you measure your arms or any body part. So that was the first time. But very recently, Nether, who has lost like 40 pounds of muscle, has came back, did a few bicep curls with uh, with pieces of wood he found in the jungle and claims that he managed to regain his size. Now, whether or not you watch the video, that should already be sketchy AF, okay? He's a stick and you're telling me that after a few months, he regained all of his size, he, he gained five inches on his arms. That's not possible, okay? 
I love anime just as much as the next, next guy. You can see that with this t-shirt. But come on now. I mean, don't you feel insulted in your intelligence when people take you for an idiot like this? And the worst part is that the video that he made as proof to back up this insane claim is a video where he's like this and he's like showing the tape here and he's just showing you a number here. The video is completely zoomed in so you don't see the other side of the tape. He never shows the other side of the arm and then the video stops. What? Hello, you have to show the other side because if you don't, you can just have the tape here tight and then you can have it completely loose and dangling here. You can add 50 inches to whatever body part. It's, it's insane too because in, his, in the comments of this video, no one was calling that out. All of his fanboys were like, oh, wow, amazing. How is that possible? How do you get to that level of court that you don't even question something so stupid? And I know the answer is that these people are completely indoctrinated where he could piss in a bottle and make them believe it's apple juice. But it's sad because when you look at it from the outside, it's clear that he's faked that measurement yet again. So of course, Nero doesn't have 20 inches arms. He never had 20 inches arms, even when he was taking steroids. And also the angles. I mean, this guy is a magician of, of angles. His videos are always, always the same. It's like the worst possible way to show the thing he's trying to show where 80% of the camera is taken by, taken by something else. There's always misdirection going on. There's always, he always plays music in the background too, maybe to try and confuse you or hypnotize you, I don't know. But he's always done that. And he's done that to fake his size. He's done that to fake his strength. He's done that to fake every single aspect of his life. And I'm going to continue on that. So in terms of insane claims, in the video, in the interview uh, by Alex, he claimed to have a 60 inches chest, so around the chest, okay? which is insane, it's insane. Even people with a barrel chest don't get to that measurement lean. He claimed to have a 20 inches neck, which is probably the most credible claim because he did used to have a big neck, but he never measured it, so we can't really know. And nowadays he has a chicken neck, so the neck is a muscle that maintains pretty well if you're not too lazy on it. And it's really tough to go from like an, a masculine neck to a neck that looks like an ankle in a few months, unless, you're of PEDs because PEDs tend to really bulk up the neck. You look at MMA fighters when they're on and when they're off, it's like night and day. It's insane how much size they lose there. He lost his size, so we can't assess that we can assess it was gained due to PED use. He has chicken legs. That's something that I've always said in the video. He he still has chicken legs. He used to have chicken legs even when he was taking drugs. And he has this weird cope where he constantly tries to claim that he doesn't, but we can see them. And I don't know how he reconciles those two, but I think that in his head, he's just trying really hard to present that image because he thinks that if he keeps pushing, people are going to believe it. And you see that with Bloho as well. Bloho still to this day claims he has 17 inches arms, even though you can see that they are clearly like 13 inches. Give me one second. Sorry for the interruption, let us continue. So I was talking about Bloho and the similar claims that they both have were they, they are always claiming insane body part size, but they never actually can go through with it and prove it. It would take just five seconds to actually do it properly and just shut the haters, but they never do it because it's always a lie. So the thing with the, the legs is important too, because Nether is trying to pass himself off as an athlete because he's supposedly an, uh, an amazing MMA fighter. He was a, an amazing strongman powerlifter. But the issue is that the common denominator of all of these people tend to be that they have pretty big legs and not just legs. They have pretty big glutes. In general, the posterior chain on these athletes is pretty well developed because they use their legs a ton. The power comes from the legs and therefore it's overdeveloped in a sense, especially like in natural powerlifters, when you look at their quads, it's quite insane. They have amazing quad development and he has none of that, which also raises the question of how could he pull these insane world record breaking lifts since he has chicken legs? It's completely unheard of. And the reason why is because he faked both his size and his strength. He has nothing to show for. And you see that, you see that devolving in body dysmorphia in him and it's quite evident that he suffers from it because 
he was always shirtless or at least showing off some level of, uh, of, uh, of skin when he was on PEDs, meaning that he was always trying to show off the yolk, the chest, etc. But nowadays, he's always wearing a shirt, or at least the camera angles is always showing his face. It's never panning down like it used to. And it, it's easily explained because he's very small nowadays and he's trying to hide it. And you can see it, as I just said, with the camera placement where when you're big and you want to show it off, you want the camera to be up because it's, it's basically showing off everything. And when you don't, you have it pointing down upwards because it just shows the face. And that's what he's been doing nowadays where you only see his face. And when he does, I think I talked about it last time, when he does his, his physique checkouts, his physics updates, he never films himself. It's like a weird, like, medley, a weird, uh, like, f Photoshop medley of pictures. It's like when you go to your grandma's and she shows you that panorama of, uh, of pictures. There's a term for that, um, a biopic, I don't know, those things that last 45 minutes and she shows you pictures of, of World War II. Neto does that to, sh to prove that his physique improved. But why would he go through the trouble of having to edit an entire video with pictures when he could just record himself? He has a camera to record himself. The reason why is because he's, he's uh, ashamed of the physique he has nowadays because he's off gear. And uh, it, something that I realized recently when I was uh, watching one of his videos was he looks like, like Scooby nowadays. He has the, the exact same hat. He has the same small neck. The same weird old man chest, you see when they, it's really flat, I can't really explain that. The same reddish tint, the only difference is that Scooby doesn't have any hair. So if Nether just shaves his head, it's going to look very similar. And I'm just throwing that out there, it's something that struck me intensely. Actually, I took a pretty good screenshot of that, screenshot that I'm going to be sharing with you eventually. And there is a recycling process on Nether's channel that I find interesting, because it correlates perfectly with the mindset that he has and the, the, the weird cultish mentality that his subscribers have also. When you look at his thumbnails, of one, they are outrageously bad. I mean, even if I tried, I couldn't make as bad as thumbnails as him. And sometimes I just Google stuff. And two, they're all photoshopped, meaning that they are all doctored. He goes on whatever editing tool he uses. I, I'm pretty sure it's not Photoshop because of the quality, but... He pretty much uses the blowing up tool on his bicep and he posts that as a thumbnail. And I don't know if he's ironic with it, but I find it strange that someone who apparently is so proud of his size and, and boasts about his size wouldn't use just normal pictures, right? For me, if I want to have a picture of my chest for a bench press video, I snap a picture of my chest. I don't go through filters to find the best picture, I just show my chest how it is. He uses old pictures from his old channel and he feels the need to photoshop them on top of that and he started to add some weird uh, drawings to it i don't know why he sometimes like puts a mask on his face or he draws like a tiger's face which i'll get into because the entire story with him and felines is very interesting and goes way back and is actually quite dark but i think he's trying to play it off like oh i'm just goofing around and oh i just happen to also make my bicep look like twice the size just for fun, which of course is all a way for him to go on the clicks and to make his subscribers believe that he's bigger than he is. And it's working actually, because when he claims to have 20 inches arms, they don't question it, even though he clearly doesn't. And a big thing that I've seen he do, uh, seen Nether do recently were, is a new cope that he's developed throughout his channels and is now in full bloom. And that is the 20 years cope. And again, it blows my mind the similarities that Nether has with Bloho because Bloho does the same thing. Bloho says, I spent 15 years or 10 years in the iron game, as if it's something that we should respect him based on. Nether says, I've been training for 10 years, which is pretty much the same thing. It's the same effect. It's a way to say that whatever he does, whatever he claims, even if he cannot prove it at all, must be justified because he's been training for so long. And if you apply to brain cells, you understand that this doesn't work because you could, I know people who've been training for 20 years and they look like shit because they don't know how to train, they're not consistent. It's, it doesn't matter how long you've been training. It matters how long you've been training hard and consistently. And the, the weird effect that it has too is that it's supposed to give him like seniority. So we're supposed to respect his opinion because he's been at it for so long. But you still have people who do bro splits after years and years of training. 
because they never learn. If you don't apply your brain to your training, you never grow, and he's never applied his brains. But the reason why I say that is because his explanation that he gave in passing to why he was able to suddenly grow 20 inches arms is memory, uh, it's uh, muscle memory. Meaning that in his words, you can shrink back to 15 inches arms and in six months of good nutrition and some pump, you can regain five inches. And the people on the channel buy that. You will need to understand absolutely nothing of training to buy that stupidity. Of course, it's not possible. And muscle memory has its place, but it's not a magical pill. If you get to a really good physique, and then you become a lazy bum for five years and you just lose all of your gains, yeah, you'll regain them faster, but it's not going to be 10 years of effort that you regain in a year. It might cut it to five or six, maybe. That's even being super generous. But it's, it's not a super acceleration as Nether presents it. And he constantly does that. He takes a, a process or a principle, a biological fact that is right, and then he blows it out of proportion and presents it as like the second coming of Jesus, which should be questioned, and I question it, and I say it's nonsense. And he also claimed that the reason why, and it's, that this one is double. See, the thing that fascinates me with Nether, and the reason why I keep making videos about him, just like with Blow, is that he lies a lot. And when people lie a lot, they have to keep track of their previous lies. And that's when things start becoming complicated because the, lag, the lies sometimes double cross each other where you have a lie that contradicts something else you said, but sometimes you can make it work in your favor and you have a lie that is going to cover two lies that you used to say. And this is what I'm going to present here because he said that he trained, starved for years, then blew up because of it. So when you think about this statement, this means that in his in his mind, in his opinion, let's say you train for two years in a caloric deficit, even though you're skinny and you make zero gains. If after that, you jump onto a decent bulk, you're going to make gains plus the gains that you, you, you should have made on the deficit. So in his brain, somewhere in the human body, the muscle has the ability to gather muscle fiber damage that never gets repaired and only gets repaired when it gets the calories for it. That has, of course, never been proven, Never, it's never even been close to being proven, but that's what he says. And that serves two purposes. One, for him, it explains why he was able to grow so big from 2017 or 2016 to when he blew up on YouTube, quote unquote. Because as I said previous, on previous videos, I found videos of him on, of, of 2015 and he was small. He looked like he didn't lift. So from 2015 to 2017, he blew up in size. And his explanation apparently is, oh, it's because he used to train starved and the second he started a bulk, he just exploded in size. And it doubles also with the mindset that he has nowadays where he's going to claim that it's also a part of muscle memory and that now, since he's passed that stage, now that he starved himself because he reintroduced calories, now he blew up again. See, with these people, it's, it's, you can always find the fell in their lies but the more difficult it is to find, the funnier. And the problem with Bloco and Nero is that they think they're much more intelligent than they actually are because their lies make no sense. You pull two strings, the entire thing is just full. And it's, it's fun. And, you, and uh, it's all something I always wonder is, how do you spend so, many so much time, so many years lying and you don't even become good at it? So that's for the claims of the 20 inches arms. Now I'm going to talk about his channel because... As I said, he's back again, and I'm not going to give the name of the channel. You know, I've sort of softened on the entire doxing thing. I would still like you guys to not reveal his real name or dox his kids and wife because they didn't do anything wrong or reveal where he lives. But his new channel could be fair game. I, I must say it's pretty boring. I mean, it's, it's never what we're talking about. You could just wait for these videos to come out. I'm actually the one who sits through his numbingly boring Q&As to bring you the men's because I know that there's always golden nuggets in there. So, talking about the new channel. He started, I think, and I'm not accurate on this, but I think it's seven to eight months ago. And I don't know if in his mind it was going to blow up, but he's discovered the tough reality of YouTube fitness when, when you don't have Alpha Destiny to give you a shout out and make your channel blow up, it's gonna stay small for a long time and it will remain small forever, actually. And so he, he was stuck at like 200 subs, 
Keep in mind also that those 200 subs were old subscribers that found his channel manually. The videos were not recommended. So we were stalling hard because, of course, he's making videos that are not appealing to the common person who tries to learn more about fighting or fitness with a peaceful camera, a peaceful quality of sound. And so he's not attractive. The channel is not attractive. So I think that for him, he realized that to get to a thousand subs, which is the mark where you can finally start monetizing the video and make a revenue out of it, he was going to have to cheat. And so what he did is, over a period of not even a month, he bought subscribers. And that was reflected on Social Blade where none of his videos were recommended, there was no spike in views, there was no spike on impressions, meaning that the channel didn't get more publicity, but for some reason he got a thousand times more subs that month, where he gained 700 subs. That's not possible. Meaning that it is possible to blow up as a channel. It is. I've had that happen where I had one video that became viral, where it got a lot of views, and I got an influx in subs. But that could be traced back to the video. It couldn't be traced back to anything on his channel. It's literally as if 700 people on that special month typed his, his channel's name and subscribed while watching a single video. How plausible does that sound? Fairly implausible. And I actually have a subscriber who is uh, also on the Nether case who found out the same thing. He found out that that was extremely suspicious. He had the same uh, conclusion as I had. And the funny thing too is that this person let me know in the comment of the previous Nether Beast character study and Magic Nether hid his subscriber count right afterwards because just like Bloho, he's obsessed with his image and therefore he watches those videos and I know he does. So hello Nether, I hope you're doing fine. But it's insane that he didn't compute in his head that the second he would hate his subscriber count, he would, he would reveal himself as a cheater. And now we know he cheated. And I think his subscriber count is still hidden. I don't know if he revealed it yet. It goes sometimes up, sometimes off, it depends. But the entire goal of this was to monetize the videos. Now, the funny thing is, when he's going to find out how much money you make out of AdSense when you have 300 subs, he's going to be extremely disappointed because that's, it's not even pennies at this point. I think YouTube just sends you like uh, tissues as, as a remuneration because you make zero. So he's going to fall from grace pretty soon because the subs he bought were most likely pretty expensive and he's not going to get his investment back. Now, when it comes to the channel and what he's trying to pull, I'm not going to go into the cult aspect because it's a theme I want to develop in another installment. But he's doing what he's always done, meaning that he's trying to multiply the channels and he's trying to make his current channel that is the most popular into a bridge so that he can actually lure people into a revenue aspect of his life where he's going to sell them something. And that channel is a channel that he named uh, something like Living of the, the Earth where he actually sells some of the plants he grows to people. So again, with him, it's always motivated by money, always. And so he funnels the subscribers from the fitness into the supplement thing, which is YouTube fitness at its finest. I mean, it's what always happens on this platform. A guy starts, he's genuine, he says it's to help people. And then at some point when he has enough of a user base, he transitions into selling supplements and programs. Does that sound familiar? Uh, did you ever live through that on YouTube Fitness? This is why I always say, uh, stay on your toes. And if the guy that you're watching, me included, starts selling stuff, maybe leave. Maybe just leave. Don't give them what they want. So, this entire um, machinery that he's trying to build also happened back in the days. Because you see, when he, f he blew up thanks to Alex, he created a separate channel that was only about spirituality. And on this one, and also on the lifting one, he was trying to peddle shamanic rituals and, and subscriber programs, etc., for a profit. And what we've seen too is that his pattern of doing that was, I explained it before, to suck up to bigger channels for, uh, for exposure. And on the other side, to create a little army of smaller channels. And I spoke about them, they tend to be small, they tend to not know what lifting is, they know much, much, uh, they, they know nothing about programming, much to the chagrin of people who actually know what they're talking about, because they have created an echo chamber where they believe that everything that is conventional or orthodox doesn't work, 
and therefore they're left with just the stuff that sucks because it, if it's not conventional, it's that no one at any point has picked it up. Anything that works finds its way into the convention at some point. So, this also resulted in the fact that a lot of those dialed fine boys of Nether are pretty small. And they are either small or they have decent physiques, but they fail to take it to the next level because they're not applying themselves. And a common trait that they all have is that they are extremely stubborn because to still be following Nether at this point, you need to be stubborn at, because all of the evidence in the world to prove that this guy is a fraud is there. It's up to you to refuse to see it, and they refuse to see it. And it's funny because for the small ones, small ones, uh, I'm thinking about like uh, Sam O'Neill that Nero was like praising as the an apostle of lifting. And in the first few Q&As I watched of Nero back in the days when I was preparing for this series, I thought, man, this guy must be insane. Like he must be jacked and big. Let me check it out. I went on the channel to find a guy who was maybe 16, 120 pounds, and looked like he never had a meal in his life. To where I was thinking, why, how does that compute? Nero told me that this guy had massive calves, he grew a massive back with weighted pull-ups, and what I see is a shrimp. What happened? There was, there's a big disconnect here. The reason is that Nero praised the guy because of his methods, not of his results. The methods aligned with what Nether thought was good to praise, and therefore he didn't care about the results, and he didn't care about the people actually because they were just underlings. When it comes to sucking up to other people, we're going to get into interesting thing here because Nether had a few individuals that he targeted where his, his goal and his methods was to go on their channel and spam his, his personal channel onto their comments. And it's something that I detest personally. I don't repress it on this channel. If people want to do it, do it. But it's a poor display of character. If you want people to get interested in you, post a funny comment. I personally have never told anyone I have a channel, I've never plugged my channel. If people find me, they find me. But these people, and Nether included, don't have that creativity and, and just ability to just be a normal person. So what they do is they tend to have a little message like, oh, yeah, this is cool, but I do it better. And then they plug their channel, which is childish. I mean, I would feel deeply ashamed if I did that. Even just for a joke, I would just, I would just not be able to go through with it. He did that so much that Steve Shaw, who's a pretty nice guy, had to go out of his way and tell him, hey, hey, bud, just stop. I mean, why do I even have to tell you that? Stop posting five comments under my, my video or you spam your channel. This, you don't do that. And apparently Nero covered down and he never did it again. But he did that to Alex too, meaning that he sent his videos directly to Alex and he said, hey, check it out. I'm pretty cool. I mean, I like Alex, but he strikes me as the type of person as a kid who would like jump on the white van because he was told there was candy in it. At what point do you click on a video that some random dude sent you because he's pretty cool or he's pretty jacked? It's sketchy. It's so sketchy. And yet it worked because eventually Alex gave him an interview. So his strategy actually worked. So that's the, the two things I want to talk about. But... When you listen to Nether, that's not what happened. It's always funny with him because I have all of the information, all of the data, but when I listen to him talk about it, it's like a completely different thing happened. And what he does is he's gaslighting people. He's trying to completely revamp reality to make it fit his understanding and to make himself look better. If you listen to Nether about the entire incidents, one, he claims that his channel blew up out of nowhere. So he's spitting into Alex's face basically and saying that the interview did nothing. When in reality, if you could look at Social Blade back in the days, I could guarantee you that 80% of his subscriber count came from Alex's channel. It's also the reason why when he got exposed, all of these people unsubscribed and he was so upset because his channel just was completely destroyed. But, but, Nether says that he got at, I think, 10k subs just through sheer talent of his own, no help. And that... Because of it, because he was such a rising star in the industry, people got jealous and trolled him. That's his way of repainting the situation. That's what happened in his brain. Like, he was so popular, so jacked, so girls were so in love with him that some mean trolls just say, ah, I don't like him, we're going to cancel him. And therefore, it worked. It was not, it's not what happened. This is 
this falls under the law. It's, it's what we call revisionism because it is not based on evidence at all. But it makes him feel better about the situation because he blew it. He got a goal, just like Bloho, again, the similarities are insane. Bloho was born with a silver spoon in his mouth. He was one of the first YouTube fitness channel. He got a 50k head start from drama videos that he squandered. He's, he's at 100k subs, but in reality, he has 20k subs. Even with all of the luck in the world, these people just don't go anywhere because they lack the talent and they're too dishonest. And it's his dishonesty, it's Nether's dishonesty that destroyed his channel. I just wanted to also say that um, Steve could tell that he was strange. Steve Shaw could tell that there was something wrong with Nether because he not only told him to fuck off, he also... He also warned people around the industry and other people of that guy and be like, be wary of him, he's really strange. And the second he got exposed, he came out and said, yeah, I knew it. Uh, which, you know, again, I mean, it's, I'm not praising him. It's pretty basic stuff, just like with Bloho. If you look at Bloho and you don't see what he is, there's a problem with you. And most likely you need to fix it as ASAP because it means that you're really susceptible to being taken advantage to in real life. If that level of fraudulency doesn't ring a bell, there's not an alarm in your brains, you are a perfect prey because you're very easy to fool. You don't pick up on hints. Even when they come from people who are unhinged and clearly cuckoo in the head, it needs to be fixed for your own good. Because if you meet Nether on the street and he's trying to get you to like a dark eye or something, it's not to do some zercher squat. I think he's going to do a coffee enema on you, whether you like it or not. And I just want to finish by, by saying that people who received help from him basically followed a newspaper horoscope because that's what the guy is. You take the, the crazy mindset that people who believe in horoscopes and that stuff have, you mix it with trend and you, got, you get neither. His advice is half nonsense based on, uh, on the rodent bodybuilders and spiritual things, new age stuff that makes a terrible mix. Like it's, it's a really strange mix because nothing actually works. You, any way you look at it, it's fake. It's, it's so clearly transparently wrong that it makes you believe how could he even manage to get to 10,000 subs? It's again, a testimony that when there is enough hype, when there is enough of a momentum, people will follow whoever. Always try and take yourself out from the crowd and look at it from the perspective of the individual. What does that person say? What does it speak to in my brains? Don't, don't follow the sheep because the sheep will follow the shepherd always. But the shepherd could turn out to be a wolf. And in this case, it's a pretty bad wolf. And I'm going to end up with uh, his weird obsession with conspiracy theories. Because again, if you listen to Nether, the system shut him down. It's, it's, not, it's not his own stupidity. It's not people who actually rallied and kicked him out of the platform. It's the system. And he claims that every single channel that got terminated was because of the system. Back in the days, it was because he was curing cancer and the big pharma was so worried that they canceled him. As if big pharma even can register a guy who has 200 subs. And then it was YouTube Fitness who was too jealous and therefore they managed to pay the CEO of YouTube with a protein powder and they cancelled him. It's always someone else's fault. And it's a pattern of behavior that you see with these people where they, they think there's a higher power. Like there's that systemic oppression that is keeping them down. And if anything happens in their life that's wrong, it's the system. So it's, it's the system, bro. But if something happens that's right, it's them. They did it. Like they, they are the individual that created the benefit. But if there's a negative, it's coming from outside. That is a very pathetic mindset to have. And the issue is that it's very seductive. And you see that, it's a little tangent, but you see that with politics. Politicians have figured out that if they can find a group of people and say, oh, all of your problems come from these people, they can easily manipulate their, uh, their voter base because they're giving them a reason why their life sucks. Instead of telling them the truth, which is, hey, your life sucks because of you. You are a bum. Get off your ass and do something. If you say that, no one is going to vote for you. Tangent over. And to finish with another comparison with Bloho, 
Nether, even though he claims to uh, be cool with it and to, just to roll with the blows and to have a thick skin, he is incredibly obsessed with trolls. He is incredibly obsessed with the with the uh, the opinion of others because still to this day he brings back the time where he got he got deleted. He brings back all of the people who went on his channel and made him feel bad about himself because they didn't believe in him. That is a telltale sign of narcissism. And if you watch this series, you understand that my diagnosis of Bloho is vulnerable narcissism and my diagnosis of Netter is grandiose narcissism. But they both have something in common. They both need something. And that something is they want attention and they want love. They need people to love them. But they express it in different ways. The vulnerable narcissists, when they don't get it, they're going to pout. They're going to complain. They're going to say, oh, I don't deserve your love. They're not going to be aggressive about it. They're going to try and guilt trip you. The grandiose narcissist is going to tell you that you're an idiot. That you don't love them because you just don't understand the world. You don't, you're too stupid. You're too much of a sheep. And that is, across the board, a pattern that is always respected with Nether because it's always falling back to that. The trolls are too stupid. I'm going to get into that uh, later. But he literally calls the trolls subhumans, monkeys, and roaches. In his mind, they're not human because they fail to realize how great it is. They can't see that he's a god on earth and therefore they must be idiots. And you see that pattern with him because, just like I said, one, he's trying to play it off, he's trying to play it cool, but you can see that he's upset. He, he doesn't hide his emotions really well. Narcissists tend to have a really tough time with poker faces because their emotions just overcome them because they feel they're righteous. They feel that... Everything they can express is from the source, like he claims all the time, and therefore people don't need to be sheltered from it because they deserve whatever is coming their way. But when he, it comes to him, and to show you the level of delusion and the, the inflated ego he has, he compares himself to celebrities getting slandered, meaning that he said at some point in a Q&A that if he hears that a, the celebrity got arrested for something terrible, he won't believe it because of what happened to him. So he's basically saying that his case was so scandalous and it was so wrong that it, he's at a point where he believes no accusations because of how bad he was treated. When in reality, if you look back to what happened again, what happened is he faked cliffs. People were like, hey, bro, those look fake. Could you film them again with a good angle? And he went, no. And he left. That's what happened. There was no harassment. His family was never in danger. He just was exposed and he didn't like it one bit because again, you can't question him. He's God. You don't question God. And therefore, he now claims that he was a, he was the, the victim of a witch hunt. He compares himself to a witch a lot. One, because I think he wants to be one. Two, because he has the haircut for it. Three, because he has the nose for it. Four, because it's a way for him to paint himself as the victim, but without looking like he's complaining. Right? That's the thing with people who have uh, the grandiose narcissism. They want you to know that you wronged them, but they don't care. Right? They, they're over it. They're, they're so great it didn't touch them, but they're still going to talk about it, but it, it didn't impact them. But they're still going to mention it five times a video. That's what he does. And the witch hunt again, I mean, if you look back to what witch, hunt, witch hunts were, the victim ended up burned at the stake or pinned with needles or beaten until senseless. He just lost a channel, and he lost a channel out of his own volition because he himself deleted it. So, again, apples and oranges, I mean, it's the inflated state of what he went through is so incredible because to him, any slight to his person is an attack against God. Again, it's, it's, it's presented as something so grave that he's willing to compare that to a literal witch hunt, which was a pretty severe time in European history that he feels no issues, he feels really comfortable comparing his, his state of, of living to that. So that shows you and that shows a lot of what goes on in his brains. And that's going to be important because I'm going to get into stuff in the future where I'm going to talk about his court, the court he's trying to build, which is really dangerous because again, he is a narcissist. Some things he claimed about animals and the people who used to watch it know what I'm talking about. That's going to be really juicy. That's going to be really good ments. Let's see what else I have for you guys. He's uh, training advice, of course, because it's trash. So I need to expose it. His obsession with supplements. 
I'm going to talk more about the Netherbeast channel as well because I have more information I want to share with you guys. His fighting skills, because I found some really juicy information also. All of the crazy stuff with aliens, I'm also going to mention in a, a big video, a big segment. Because, of course, his best friend is Jesus, right? And uh, that's, that's, that's not even top 8 of the most insane claims he has. So you're in for a real roller coaster on this one. The fact that he thinks he's not human, he's a reptilian, I'm going to cover that as well. The fact that he apparently can break world records, that's going to be a fun one too. The veganism... A lot of good things, friends. I'm going to keep coming back with these. They're not just the, like the blowhole ones. The blowhole ones come every single month without fails. This one every two months, every two months and a half, I'm going to surprise you with one. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.